Hi there, this is Caitlin Porter from the Mongoose Enablement Team. In today's video, I will explain some recommendations and best practices your team and applications can follow to maximize the benefits Mongoose can provide. Here are five fundamental strategies that we suggest you utilize when developing an application within Mongoose. Minimize code, utilize the low-code development tools, adoption of the core, the metadata-based model, and the runtime inheritance model. The first strategy is to minimize the amount of code added to an application. This can be done by leveraging the framework capabilities, which allows for faster development, simple customer extensibility, consistency of operation, and the ability to leverage new features of the framework in future versions. The second strategy is to utilize the low-code development tools provided to speed up development processes. This includes tools like the new form builder tool to quickly create forms based on templates that can provide everything from responsive to high productivity forms. You can use the new data maintenance wizard to quickly create new localized data sources. The new IDO wizard can build an IDO on top of an existing data source. The workflow wizard, which can build AES automations over data change of states. The Ion API to IDEO wizard to create mid-tier IDOs over external Ion API data sources, such as M4M3. The deployments tool for packaging and transporting forms between configurations. And the data lake to IDEO wizard can easily read the schema from table-based data sources in the data lake and create real-time connections with proper data-typed IDOs in Mongoose, all without having to write connection code to the data lake and leveraging M4Ion API. The third strategy is to utilize the core as much as possible. The Mongoose framework provides many core features that eliminate the need to build custom infrastructure. These features can be leveraged to minimize development efforts and will automatically pick up future enhancements to future releases. Some of the core features include the application event system that performs tasks such as notifying and emailing users, scheduling tasks, and much more. Also the ability to attach notes or documents to any record in the system as well as web service access for any IDO created. The fourth strategy is to utilize the metadata-based model. There are many mechanisms provided to minimize the need to drop into code. On the client side, leveraging the validator contract to validate fields, set values, and handle messages. Collection actions such as adding, deleting, or refreshing data. Also the ability to handle dynamic actions such as enable when, visible, or required when expressions can replace writing in code. On the server side, the application event system can be used to implement logic for business processes, application logic associated with inserts, updates, and deletes of data. Algorithms can be encapsulated and executed from AES with inputs and outputs. IDEO extension class code can be wrapped up and invoked from AES in small loosely coupled components. Use the WinStudio keyword interpreter to populate values at runtime and use the standard events and event handler response types to access collections and perform actions. This can allow you to perform actions to a collection without having to drop into code. The fifth strategy is to utilize the inheritance model. The Mongoose framework has several levels of operation in which one or more levels can inherit properties, characteristics, and attributes from higher levels. This allows for a single point of maintenance throughout your application. The ability to reuse these classes speeds up development time and provides consistency in your data and user interface attributes. Moving on to preparation and training, here are some points about what skills and preparation will make a team ready to develop effectively with Mongoose. Developers need a good understanding of relational database concepts and SQL statements. One of the design goals of Mongoose is to let developers leverage relational database capability to the fullest without constraining how it might be used. So someone who understands this technology will be comfortable with much of the way Mongoose lets you define and utilize IDEO collections. Developers also need to learn how to develop in Mongoose. Use the five goals that we listed earlier to support this and avoid bypassing the built-in metadata based functionality by using code. Developers should become proficient at using the Mongoose productivity UI. Much of the Mongoose development is done using these high productivity forms that have built-in filtering and navigation. These are critical for working with large sets of data. Understand the application requirements as well as the infrastructure capabilities and how to optimize the intersection of these two areas to meet business needs. This would include things like adding logic, accounting for performance implications, and ensuring proper security. 
The Mongoose framework is .NET based. Therefore, when you need to draft a code to do IDEO extension classes or manipulate form objects in FormScript, you can utilize VB.NET or C Sharp. With utilization of common .NET languages, you do not need to have proprietary skill sets to execute your in-house development. We suggest a three-phase approach your team should take when developing a mongoose. Phase one includes creating a descriptive list of forms needed, including high productivity forms as well as consumer UI pages. Utilize the mongoose designer to do mockups. This is especially critical when it comes to alternative devices that bring UI design challenges. The next step is to create a list of tables and columns, as well as any calculated fields that will need to be added to IDOs. Look out for data and processes that are already a part of the core Mongoose application, for example using email address associations for user accounts. Map out the data dependencies, and start with those with no dependencies which are typically the most simple to create. Lastly, determine what type of application is needed, either multi-tenant or on-prem. Multi-tenant hosts multiple tenants within the same set of databases, which is appropriate when none of the tenants will require full security and extensibility access to the application. The second option is on-prem, where each tenant has their own set of databases and they in turn have full access to the development and security infrastructure. A major advantage of Mongoose is the fact that it uses a single code base. So whether on multi-tenant or on-prem, your code is the same and transferable between the different topologies. Phase 2 is where you will begin creating your application in the sequence that was defined in Phase 1. Step 1 is to identify and build any IDEO property classes needed. These are the base of the inheritance model and allow you to define the fundamental data types in your application. Step 2 is to use the new data maintenance wizard to create your data maintenance. A data maintenance consists of the table in the application database, an IDEO publishing access to that table, and a form which provides the user interface for maintaining the data. This wizard will create all three in one step, and here is where you can use the property classes you created in the previous step. Step three is to complete as needed. This includes things like table joins, calculated properties, or relationships to other IDOs. This could also include adjusting the form to add joined information, modifications to form layouts, and adding logic like validation. Step four is to build an associated query form for more complex forms using the new form wizard. Add the association to the query form from the maintenance form. Step five is to finish the maintenance form and query form by adding form captions and initial commands. And lastly, add some data so you can ensure validations and data formats are working as expected. Phase three involves finishing out the application by building out the specialized user interfaces. This would include things like zero training web portal pages or dashboards. This phase would also include designing for different device types such as mobile devices and tablets. Lastly, finish up by adding in server-side or client-side logic which could involve writing code or using the client and application event systems. It's important to note that you can also use Mongoose to build over an existing set of tables and columns. The development process would need to be adjusted to incorporate these scenarios. In that case, you would need to first import the schema into the application database. Tables would then each need to be open from the SQL tables form to add the required mongoose columns. Then IDOs can be built on top of those new tables using the IDO collections form. And lastly, using the new form wizard, you can create the maintenance forms on top of those new IDOs. Mongoose provides many integration options, and for a given use case, it is likely that more than one of these will suffice. The challenge is to not only be aware of the various integration options, but how to correctly determine the cost benefit of each. Here's a list of the integration options in Mongoose. Ion can be used to map to or from your IDOs and Ion bots and integrate to your application using m ion The Ion API gateway can be used to access native and non-native APIs. You can respond to or emit context information from any form or page you build in Mongoose. And then within N4 Portal, you can integrate to any other context-enabled application. Any IDO created is available for integration and secured using the IDO request interface. You can post an IDO request XML to a URL provided on the Mongoose web server that front ends a queue. The Mongoose replication subsystem can be used with asynchronous rules to send or receive IDO request XMLs into tables and to send IDEO request invoke XMLs when procedures are executed. 
One action you can define in AES Event Handlers is Invoked Web Service. The in out parameters can be mapped to the state of the event handler. You can also set up connection profiles to tables and external databases that are SQL Server or Oracle, and then build IDOs on top of those tables and add UI, AES automations, or integrations against them. Using user controls or web browser components, you can embed the UI of other applications into your Mongoose form, and other applications can embed any Mongoose form within a browser control. Using form scripting code, you can perform a wide range of integrations. IDEO extension class code runs on the app server and can perform a wide range of integrations. While using direct table access is not always appropriate and not available in multi-tenant cloud because of security reasons, this option is available on-prem to let you leverage your application database using standard RDMS capabilities. The best option for your use cases will vary, and in some situations, a small proof of concept effort to ensure you understand the options provided will be worthwhile. There's an integration guide on the Mongoose portal with details on all of the various options you have for integrating to or from your Mongoose application. The Mongoose framework provides tooling, development check-in or out capabilities, and source control interfaces over some aspects of the application. For on-prem instances, development check-in or out and source control are supported for IDEO metadata, which includes IDEO property classes, IDEOs, and IDEO extension class assemblies. Support for form metadata, such as global objects and form definitions. Also provided is interfaces to support source control through SVN, Microsoft TFS, Git, and Microsoft SourceSafe. For cloud instances, Mongoose provides development check-in or out capabilities for IDEO metadata and form metadata. While Mongoose does not provide source control for cloud environments at this time, you can still develop your application on-prem with full source control and promote your code to a cloud environment. This is possible because of the single shared code base for on-prem and cloud instances of Mongoose. There are a range of options for managing the development and deployment lifecycle of a Mongoose application. Being aware of these options is important, even if you choose to start with the simplest of these options. For option one, you can develop and run in place out of the same set of databases with no source control interfaces. This requires no downtime, users can use the application while development activities are taking place, and changes can be seen next time the user logs in. Test and deployment within the same instance is provided by the framework for IDEO metadata, so developers can make changes and test without affecting other users. Option two includes everything from option one, with the exception of using a separate production and development database. Option two also includes the addition of support for development check-in or out operations of form metadata with the use of the form control tool. Option three builds onto option two with the addition of source control interfaces for IDEO and form metadata. Check-in operations will produce SQL files, which can be checked into source control, which can be utilized for history, reverting changes, or for deployment of fixes or enhancements. Mongoose also includes tools for importing and exporting of IDOs. And lastly, option four builds onto option three with the addition of development processes for those application elements not covered by Mongoose tooling. This would cover elements such as the AES metadata and code written for IDO extension classes, which can be manually exported and imported using the tools provided by Mongoose. The code written for .NET IDEO extension classes can be checked in or out using standard processes. For on-prem installations, this will consist of installing a set of databases and the creation of a configuration that points to those databases. Mongoose does not supply any source code, tooling, or infrastructure for installation. However, the Mongoose setup and configuration wizards will install the app server, web server, and client elements of the framework. It will also configure the app server services that are part of the framework. It will create new Mongoose databases for starting new Mongoose applications, and will create and manage configurations. For cloud deployments, installation and setup is handled for you by Enforce Cloud Operations Group. They will provide you with a fully configured tenant, which allows for quick deployment, ease of configuration, automatically scalable, and a cloud safe, secure, and a fully backed up environment. It's important to note that because of the single shared code base, the installations that we do for cloud tenants is the same as on-prem. Since a Mongoose application consists of a set of databases, the upgrade consists of updating the schema, T-SQL if any, any AES metadata in the application database, 
updating the IDO metadata in the objects database, and updating the vendor version of your forms and other global objects in the forms database. A Mongoose application starts with the core elements in the app, forms, and objects databases. And because a new release of Mongoose can include updates to these core elements in the databases, your development environment will need to use the Mongoose upgrade utilities provided during upgrades of the framework. When upgrading the application database for on-prem environments, this requires a manual process to develop upgrade scripts for schema changes that can be safely executed against previous versions. And when extending AES metadata you build, you will need to use the AES utilities to ensure the extensions continue to operate. For the objects database, the import utilities and the options that users have for extending IDEO metadata ensure that user extensions continue to operate and upgrade automatically. And for the forms database, because forms and global objects can be extended at a site, group, and user level, the upgrade process requires the user to execute the form sync tool if they have created these extensions. It will do a three-way diff of the old and new vendor versions that you created with the user's versions, and based on policy provided by the user, will bring the extensions into the new vendor version. For cloud deployments, the toolset is upgraded on a regular monthly cadence. No additional configuration or input is required for upgrades of the toolset. Any additional functionality added to the Mongoose toolset is immediately available. Any toolset changes are backwards compatible, and the FormSync tool runs automatically and will detect any discrepancies that need resolution. I hope now that your team can utilize these development standards to maximize the benefits that Mongoose can provide. A detailed guide of these best practices is linked in the description box below or check out the Mongoose portal for more documentation and resources. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching.